This activity was created to help you understand how to modify or scaffold the I hear activity on my Google Classroom. This activity works for both nonverbal and verbal students. If you're working with a nonverbal student, then what I would do is have them touch the answer. And while they're touching, you are going to model the words for them. So instead of them saying it, you're going to say it. If you have a verbal student, you can still have them touch, but they're also required now to say what the answer is, whether they're providing it at the word level or the sentence level. And you can make the activity easier by providing a model for the student, or you can fade that cueing away to where you're just giving a verbal cue or you're giving gestural cues. For levels one, two, and three, the student is allowed to both hear the sound and see the picture when it's displayed on the screen. So this would be level one. Bicycle. You touch. Bicycle. Look. Bicycle. You touch. For level two, you're going to allow the student to hear the sound, see the picture, and then the easiest way you can progress from just modeling where the picture is, is to cover some of the choices. So if you do a field of two pictures, that's going to be the easiest. So it would be like this. And then as you reveal more pictures, that will make the task harder for the student. So the next level would be find the bicycle. What is it? What do you see in the picture? Bicycle, very good. If you're working with a nonverbal student, you can just have them touch the picture and you will model the word for them. So bicycle and then have the student touch. For level three, the student is allowed to hear the sound and see the picture, but now they're required to give a sentence. If you're doing the sentence level with a nonverbal student, you will have them touch and you are going to model as they touch. So you can either give hand over hand assistance or you can give a verbal cue. What do you see? What do you see in the picture? What is it? Or you can give a gestural cue where you just gesture or show them what they need to point to. A good way to do a gestural cue that's not too overbearing would be to do an indirect cue. So if you're doing bicycle, you would do, what do you see? What's this? What do you see? And you kind of circle the area, but not directly point. This is a direct cue, this is an indirect cue. And again, if you cover some of the pictures, it will be easier for the student. If you reveal more pictures, it will be harder. So level three verbal student would touch and say, I hear a bicycle. Level four students are required to only hear the sound. So they're not allowed to see the picture anymore. They just have to listen to the sound and that makes the task a lot harder because now there's not a visual cue to help them. So you would play the sound. Then you're going to pause the video and for level four, so you can start by just showing two pictures. Was it a bicycle or a bus? That's the easiest way for level four. And then if you want to make it harder, you can reveal more pictures. So a field of three, a field of four, and just keep revealing more pictures. The more pictures you reveal, the harder the task. So level four is just going to touch bicycle, depending on how many pictures are revealed. A student at a level five would only be allowed to hear the sound, just like level four, but now they're required to say or touch an entire sentence. If the student is nonverbal, the adult will model the sentence as the student touches each picture. If the student is verbal, the student will be required to say while they touch, and if they need to, they can get a model from a parent or an adult. So now you're pausing the video again before the picture comes up on the screen, and then the student is required to say, I hear a bicycle. 
if the sentence level is really hard, you know, you can cover some of the choices up. And then once they touch the picture, even if they touch the wrong picture, you can say, oh, hey, let's see if you were right. And you can unpause the video. <gasps> were you right? Were you correct? Nope. Okay. What was it? It was... It was a bicycle. So just remember when you're working with students, you can make this task as easy or as difficult as you want. The easiest way you can do it is just have them touch the screen where they get to see the picture. Once you take the picture away, that's going to become harder for the students. So they're only relying on sound and no visual anymore. So if you're working with a nonverbal student, the adult is going to model the word or the sentence for the student. If you're working with a verbal student, the student's required to say. So if you're working with a student, whether it's nonverbal or verbal, the hierarchy of prompting from most to least prompting would be providing a model, providing a verbal cue, providing a direct gestural cue where you're pointing to the answer, providing an indirect gestural cue where you're circling your, with your finger in this general area of where the answer would be, but not directly pointing to the answer. So that's how you would fade away your cueing for either a nonverbal or a verbal student. I hope that was helpful. I think this activity is really gonna be fun for the kids and they're going to like it. The children love watching videos. They love interacting with the videos. And if you use the language boards that I've provided in my Google Classroom, I think it will really help the students be able to express themselves. So have fun with it and message me on ParentSquare or Google Classroom with any questions.